Sure. I, I want to give a shout out to ISA, Iranian Student Alliance in America, because they are co-hosting this with Paya tonight, and we didn't mention them. My apologies. It's all about you students, so thank you for hosting this tonight. That's it? We're doing it. ISA, that's it? Yeah. Good. Well, now we have a... The next is, uh, uh, this gentleman is uh, involved, uh, it, we have a, it's Barack Obama. <laughs> it's the closest we can get, that we have gotten to Barack, not like as a... As it is the closest that we can get to Barack. He is a, a senior advisor for the State Department, a senior advisor for Barack Obama. He uh, has been quoted by Senator John Kerry on the floor of the Senate. He has Hillary Clinton on speed dial. Uh, Shall we bring him out? The man's got clout. Let's bring him out. Dr. Vali Nass. Political agenda right now. I think we should. Uh, Human rights in Iran. <laughs> what is wrong with the, uh, the, the. The. The parking situation in Berkeley. I can't do anything about that. <laughs> go ahead. This one's easy. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Khob Valijan, uh, I think it's such an honor to have you with us. Can we put up some of those pictures we have? Uh, you've written more books than anybody I know. Uh, the Shiite Revival, The Rise of Islamic Capitalism. First of all, have the Shiites been revived? <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, Valijan. I just sit next to him sometimes and I kind of try to be like Maz, but... Uh, <laughs> nobody laughs at my jokes, Ma. Oh, you, you did fine. No, you did. Yeah, you got a great shit. That's for sure. Vali, tell us about your rise to this incredible position that you're in right now, um, being one of the premier um, experts on the Middle East for this uh, administration. It can't have been an easy journey. Well. Um, no, it, it's, it takes time, it takes patience, but actually I want to go back to something Hamid said. Uh, you know, when I, I came to this country when I was 18, it was uh, right after the Iranian Revolution. It was a very difficult time, uh, not just because uh, of the hostage crisis and the image of Iran, but also I thought that uh, the way the story of the revolution was told, it vilified an entire generation in Iran, generation of our parents who had worked very hard regardless of their political views. And uh, I just, at that time, uh, young and heady as I was, I re simply refused to believe that story and refused to submit to it. And I thought that, you know, you have to stand up and re retell that story and try to sort of take Iran out of the clutches of the interpretations that in the media, in academia, was being given about why there was a revolution in Iran and what happened. And I understood we have nothing uh, you know, to support us other than our knowledge. In other words, the, the whole game is to know more and to say it as louder and louder and in many ways that you can until somebody listens, until you have an imprint. And we didn't have the resources today that organizations like PIO or Network of Accomplished Iranians in every field have. And, and, I, and I think that was the drive, to write more, uh, you know, to, to try to be the best that there is. And I think over time, gradually, people began to listen. And um, yeah, I don't think we have told that story. We have not yet retold that story. There's a lot to be done. But that's essentially what put me on this journey. Did you start out as a, um, you know, what, what, what were you studying? What was your goal as an 18-year-old when you went to, where did you go to undergrad? I went to Tufts University. Tufts, and then, and then you graduate? Uh, I went to graduate school at Tufts, and then I did my PhD at MIT. Wow, okay, uh, a lot of MIT people here tonight. Uh, I'm, right. feeling, I'm feeling dumb now. Um, so, but, but, so you were studying, what were you studying at the time? I was studying uh, international relations and, and Middle East studies, and then I did also my PhD in political science. With the goal of becoming a writer, a journalist, a professor, a, what, what was the goal? The goal was to be a professor. A professorship was the, was, the, was the sort of what earned you your salary. 
But the goal was to have an impact on the way in which Americans think about the Middle East, about Iran, about our heritage, culture, and to be in a position that you would have an impact uh, in the way in which we are actually interpreted as a people. Vali, uh, when you look at our community, Iranian Americans have accomplished so much. I mean, uh, when you look at uh, Dr. Naderi, who helped uh, NASA land on Mars and de deliver those beautiful pictures uh, after they had repeatedly crashed, when you look at Anusha Ansari becoming the first female space explorer, when you look at yourself, uh, we're so accomplished individually, and yet we have not been able to uh, capitalize on that and convert that into a political clout on the Hill, although that's changing a little bit. How important is an organization like Paya uh, on that front? Well, we have a saying in Persian, which is Yek das you know, you have, we, you know, individuals can excel and they will do well for themselves. And America is a society that actually celebrates individual entrepreneurship and activism. But ultimately, uh, our destiny can only be changed or, or our full potential can be realized if we are a community, which means that the various uh, people who are very successful in various fields, as well as those who are aspiring, young people, old people, are banded together, have a common set of values, have a common understanding of who they are in this country. Uh, who do we want Americans to see when they think about Iranian Americans? I mean, often I think, you know, we, uh, uh, we don't realize that, you know, all, but particularly in the political arena, uh, people look at Iranian Americans and they think they're just Iranians are here to tell us to be nice to Iran, which means that they are essentially subjects of another government. They don't see us as Americans, as people they need to listen to. So we have a big burden of convincing the American community about not just how good we are at individual things we do, but that how as a community we belong and we have a contribution to make. But I think Paya has taken a very giant step on creating awareness, first of all, among Iranian Americans that they are a community and they're only a community if they act as a community. And then it has done a lot to actually create the mechanics of that, including events like this one. Um, now, I, I actually started a PhD program to get my PhD in political science to become a professor, and then I dropped out. Um, Yad Nagidi. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but the question I have for you is one of the, you know, whenever, when we were in the, these, these classes, we would talk about, okay, we're gonna be professors, we're gonna write, publish, or perish. But then how, the question was, what practical, uh, 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 what's, what's the practical influence we'll have in the real world? And you're someone who now is having this practical experience. And my question to you is, first of all, when did that moment happen where you got plucked in? Like who, did you get a call from Hillary Clinton? Hey, this is Hillary, come on down. Like how did it, what happened? And what kind of practical uh, uh, influence and what are you doing in the practical world now with that influence? Well, the, the bridge between uh, you know, those who think and those who practice in America is not an easy one. And people who work in universities often work on very complicated, sophisticated things and they talk to, to, to themselves. I, uh, because of the Iranian revolution, I was very interested in religion and politics in the Middle East. And when I got my PhD, nobody in academia was actually interested in religion and politics. So I had a tough time finding a job at the time. And I ended up in San Diego uh, teaching initially at a small university. It was a far world from Boston. But actually, it was a very good thing, because in order to relate to, to people around you who were not interested in the Middle East, knew very little about it, you learned that you have to speak in language that a, a broader cross-section of people can understand. And that, for me, was the bridge to gradually you know, write for newspapers, do interviews, uh, engage and uh, and as a, and after my book the Shia revival came out uh, because there was uh, that was in the middle of the Iraq war and there was very little understanding of the Shia Sunni conflict it, it did well and uh, and I think I generally fundamentally believe and I think this is a value that Iranians Americans share that ultimately excellence or you know being good at something is is rewarded that it might take time but uh, it's kind of like market forces. The cream rises to the top. That eventually, uh, uh, if you are doing something well, if you are best at what, what you say and what you do, that uh, ultimately you will have your moment to be heard, and that's essentially your foot in the door. And uh, then you know, it's a different set of responsibilities uh, than, than just getting to that point. 
So you specialize uh, right now. You advise on Pakistan and Afghanistan, correct? That's correct. Not Iran? No. <laughs> How difficult is that uh, for you to uh, stay out of that conversation? Or are you out of that conversation? Or can you not speak about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, when, you, when you go from academia to government, there are many things that are difficult and new. One is that generally you don't have liberty to talk publicly, period, regardless of what topic it is. So I was used to giving a lot of lectures, being on a lot of media, you know, giving my opinions. Those you know by and large have to keep to yourself because it would be construed as, as US policy. So there are, it's a different approach to, uh, to things. Um, you know, privately, obviously, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people about Iran. Uh, it is difficult because th since the time that I joined the administration, it has been particularly interesting times with Iran. There was, uh, you know, the issue of human rights that you raised, which is an ongoing issue. There was issue of the, how to interpret the elections of 2009 and you know there's all that roller coaster of continuously on and off negotiations with Iran and you know Americans are as perplexed policymakers as well as the public about what comes next in Iran as a country and then in US Iran relations and uh, so it's very difficult not to be able to give uh, your your two cents but you know you you make choices and uh, you know sometimes there's a there's a uh, sort of a, uh, there's another side of the coin that comes with those choices you make. So you give uh, advice on uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Is there a Pakistani doctor who's giving advice on Iran? Is that <laughs> is that how it works? I, actually, actually, they, uh, that would that's, explain that's a lot. Very true. That's actually very true. Uh, it, it's a problem. Uh, I mean, you know, I remember there was a very one high-level meeting with uh, Egyptian, uh, very senior Egyptian official. In which I met with uh, Ambassador Holbrook and, and uh, other senior um, um, State Department officials, and there were two Iranian Americans on his boat on his two sides. There was a young uh, Iranian American a lady who works at the State Department, and I was sitting on his other side. And Ambassador Holbrook, you know, true of all Americans, didn't see this as a problem, and you know, uh, introduced us as how proud he was that there were Iranian Americans working this issue. And you could see the jaw of the Egyptian. Our minister on the other side dropping some kind of a conspiracy going on that Iranians were taking over the State Department and it's now going to be anti-Arab. Um, but, uh, but, you know, the, I think it, it goes to the fact that Iranian Americans, many of them, uh, uh, are, are moving up in this society because they are Americans. So you know, they go to schools like Berkeley, whether it's in media, whether it's in government, whether it's in business, they are moving up. They are, they, there are a lot more sort of footprint of young Iranian Americans than, than we notice. And, uh, and they are being appreciated. I mean, this, they, they are going there not because of uh, who they are, but because they're good. Um, as we're uh, starting to wrap uh, this segment up, uh, one of the questions I always have is, again, if someone in the audience is sitting there going, this is cool, I want to do what he's doing, what do they got to do? Well, you know, my, my career path is, is unorthodox. I mean, you don't start in academia and end up in government. It's a huge detour. But I would say that, you know, the, my life lesson, which is what my parents gave, my father used to tell me, is that regardless of what you want to be, that's okay so long as you try to be the best at it. And I think if you, if you if, but getting to the best at what you are also teaches you a lot of other things that are useful in, in doing different things in life. I mean, uh, you know, Dr. Beglari there is a, is a PhD in, in physics, and he was one of the best in his own field. And that, I think, is important in why he's also uh, so, so accomplished in, in, in the field of... Uh, he's an climate. enigma. Well... <laughs> he's an enigma. Being a nuclear physicist that's and right. uh, right. running city core, that's, that's just right. not fair. But I think I, the, what I would say is that, you know, uh, uh, you have to find a passion for what you want to do. As, as Hamid said, it's very important, but you, you have to ex uh, try to be the best at what you can. And then you know, that would give you options going forward and different doors open and if you're good and uh, you're capable, you'll be able to walk through them. So to get into politics, do they move to DC? Do they go to San Francisco and start there? Do they go to Albuquerque, like Dovar was saying, and find a smaller place to get started with? Or how does, what, what, what's, the, what's the step? Well, the best thing at this age is, is essentially for, for uh, people who are between high school and college, or in college, or even between college and graduate school, is to essentially get involved. There are political campaigns, there are congressmen, there are state legislators, there are state governments, 
that you can get involved in as interns, even paying interns. It teaches you a lot about how the system works. And then, you know, you can try to get jobs through your congressman. I mean, jobs in Washington on the Hill are not given just to whoever applies. They, these are used as, as favors to constituents. So congressmen would give jobs to ch kids from their constituencies to come to Washington. And you gradually begin to build a, a, both a track record and also experience. You get to learn how it's done. And it's very useful in uh, terms of getting into graduate school, into law school. And you can then decide if this is for you. Do you want to be behind the scenes as like a radio producer? Or do you want to be in front of the scene as a politician like an, like an anchor? Before we let you go, we have to ask, uh, what's President Obama like? And, and, and Hillary Clinton as well. Uh, well, they're both super smart, so I, I can say that. Uh, um, they're, you know, they're very serious people, very analytical, uh, very eager to, uh, you know, hear, uh, you know, solid information, analysis, ideas. Um, this political party, without a doubt, is, is very open to uh, integrating uh, various communities in America. They have been extremely open to Iranian Americans, to also other Muslim Americans. And, and, and uh, it's a time that, you know, this community can take advantage to flourish in this particular sector in government. Have you taken them to have gourma sabzi or chili kebab? <laughs> yeah. You've got to uh, ask these questions. Well, I don't know. President Obama seems to be preferring Pakistani food. He claims to be able to make dal. So maybe you'll have a better chop at the <laughs> <laughs> Little <laughs> German, Valley Nass. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much.